it is impossible to hold an unwilling people hostage in any country without negative consequences, end of quote. Biafra in this context is both a specific geographical aspiration and as well as a metaphor for getting Nigeria to work. And coming at a time when many analysts argue that Nigeria has never been more divided and some even question its long-term survival as a country, while a cacophony of persistent voices insists on the restructuring of Nigeria, this book is timely and provides a powerful insight on the road to take. For anyone interested in understanding the idea and metaphor of neo biafranism or the historical event of its first advent, aftermaths and the new resurgence, as well as the road that Nigeria must take to save its fragile state. So there is a division in the new neo biafranism between the Kano and Nam the Kano's group and the Dozei Kedife and the other elders, uh, that they have actually set up a customary government, as it were, on how to pursue this. So, um, as they put it, if I brought the Koku Maka. Then, let me say that Nigeria has wittingly or unwittingly dragged the Biafran issue from the periphery into the mainstream discussion. Nam de Kano, in my view, threw a bait and Nigeria took it. Today, he is the most popular political prisoner and will end up either as a hero or a martyr. But to his credit, he has forced Nigeria and the world to discuss Biafra. I believe that keeping him there does not do Nigeria any good. I believe this young man should be released and released like yesterday. I will not be surprised if he becomes a subject of the next political campaigns. Just like we dealt with Awolowo, who was convicted and imprisoned of treason, or Gawan, <laughs> charged with treason, or even Ojuku himself was forgiven, and so on and so forth. <laughs> I don't want to make any predictions, but I believe we need to solve this. Because according to Ofodile, this book, quote, he said, the lesson to be learned, if anyone cares to listen, is that the detention of Nam de Kano, no matter for how long, will not stop the agitation of Biafra, end of quote. He further argues that the detention my people, oh my God, one and some of you, I get go this video before. And even the way we take this video to refresh memory again, some of the things in here, the present governor of uh, Nanambra State, you about some years ago, and those things now they are happening. You understand? So how can you we take this video so that one of you know they actually have seen all these things happening now, all fugia that time. And he stated it clearly, you know, but they didn't listen. Do you get? So, when you get the video, and the king get this video, please be sharing it up, okay? The of Uwazurike between 2005 to 2007 helped to radicalize his followers. The same thing happened when the leader of Boko Haram was killed. His followers became more radicalized. Detention of Nam Dekano, I never heard of him before this time, to be quite honest. Never heard of him. I didn't even know about the IPOP uh, or whatever thing. Until this thing, and you now realize, globally, it's become an issue, and it's become mainstream. Now, and again, quote, he says, this book argues, that the idea of a customary government under the Supreme Council of Elders in accordance with customary law enjoys the support among a section of the Igbo but it is the Biafra or death philosophy of Nam de Kano that found resonance across the length and breadth of the Igbo nation. Therefore, there cannot be a resolution of the Biafran dilemma without a wholesome engagement of the Nam de Kano stroke Uche Mefor faction of IPOB. End of quote. That's what this was. So, if I were President Buhari, quite honestly, 
I will be very suspicious of anyone who advises me to ignore the Biafran issue. I'll be very suspicious. Anybody who says that is either ignorant or being mischievous or quite patently doesn't mean well for the government itself. It probably wants the same government to repeat the mistakes of the past so that it could lead it down the trend. We must start learning in this country. So let's talk Biafra. Where are the Igbo elite and the intelligentsia in all of this, especially those in Nigeria? It seems, as this book points out, this is being driven mostly by the Igbo intelligentsia in diaspora, the new resurgence. The new ones within, there seems to be a division, three classes you can identify. The ones within the mainland, and I'm shocked, and you discuss, they have a different point of view. Those in diaspora within Nigeria, so to speak, who are in Abuja and Lagos and so on and so forth, Kano, Kaduna, and so on. And an elder was asked about that, living in one of these uh, northern states about Biafra, and they asked him, uh, what do you think about this Biafra? He said, well, no. Nah. I just said, no, I came my name and I'm a man and I'm not going to go back. In other words, they should keep it up, but you know I can no longer go now. You see, all the things I have here, I cannot carry them on my head. So, there seems to be a sense of either denial and on one part, or people who think, no, 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 it won't be. Because... We can't just imagine it. And because of some discussion that, oh, okay, if this happens, uh, you will lose your property, you will lose that, and so on. Of course, that is untenable. I mean, uh, I, I too was wrong on this because if, the, if by any chance you have another state of Biafra, it will be the 16th state of ECOWAS. And that means you have free movement of goods and persons. But the fundamental question, the fundamental issue is that this debate is not happening. This whole thing is being driven almost in a haphazard manner, and I will say, and stresses the urgency of action now. The clock is ticking. 